Hi friends, welcome or welcome back. My name's Angel. I've been thrifting lately, having been inspired by Magnolia Homes once again and a couple of high-end designers. I had my office space in mind. Working from home, I spent a lot of time in there, and although it was very functional, it just needed a little bit of zhuzhing up. So after I collected my inspiration and headed to the thrift stores, I had some great things to work with. So let's get started. The first thing that I really wanted to change out was the layout of the desk. So I went to Facebook Marketplace and found this matching desk to our bookcases for $75. It needed some love, but it had potential. Lighting at thrift stores is a great place to start. I found this great little antique looking candle lamp for $7.99. I just liked it, no other reason than that. So I brought it home, took it apart, and I removed the candle covering here, this white covering, because it was already cracked. Once I pulled that off, I removed the outlet cover where the bulb goes out of it, placed that back on, and then purchased new coverings. I slipped that right on, cleaned this up, put it back together, and it was good to go. I thought it was just a really unique lamp to put in the office. I needed some task lighting for my desk, and this Lulu and Georgia lamp had caught my attention, but was a bit pricey. So when I found this little gem for $7.99 with that same sweet pleated shade, I couldn't pass her up. She did have some wear around the switch, but I knew we could address that with a little bit of rub and buff. So I tapped on some antique gold rub and buff and then blended that around the base and then went back in with ebony rub and buff just to make sure that the color was well blended. Cleaned up the shade and it was good to go. Thrifting decor does not have to mean an extensive DIY, and this little Bombay desktop compass for $4.99 is a perfect example. The felt was loose, I simply hot glued that back, and then used a lint roller to remove any dirt or hair from the back of the felt, cleaned it up, and then inserted it into our new lighted desk cabinet. Good to go. Loving little curiosities, I picked up this calligraphy brush from At Home for $7.99. I've seen them around, but they too can be kind of pricey. So I thought that we could DIY this with just simply paint. So I went through, taped off the areas, and then painted the main area I wanted black to match my inspiration piece. On the ends, after that dried, I used truffle-colored mineral paint on those areas and then tapped off the excess with the paper towel to get the result I wanted. And here's how it turned out. I think it looks a little vintage and different and it's just an interesting piece. Coffee table books can be quite expensive too. I grabbed this Norman Rockwell painting book for a dollar at an estate sale and I thought it would be perfect for the next item that I thrifted. McGee & Co. has been showing this beautiful vintage book stand online for $32 for quite some time. It is always sold out. So when I found this at a vintage thrift store, I was so excited. It was $24, but I got it for $19, 20% off. Given that our desk unit is wood, I always like to pick up stone or alabaster pieces. These bookends were just the perfect thing at $8.99. They added a brightness and just another luxurious texture to the bookcases. Magnolia has been showing us some beautiful brass pieces from picture frames to calendars and clocks. So when I seen this beautiful little brass picture frame for $1.99, I snatched it up. Remember, our looks don't have to be exact, just similar. Loving the brass trend, I couldn't pass up this little candle lantern that was solid brass with a beautiful patina for $8.99. Another example of a very easy thrift flip. I've really been loving some of Magnolia's beautiful wall art. 
particularly the Eileen Fitzgerald, but they're very expensive. So when I found this 30 by 36 picture frame for $15 half off, I knew that we could create something very similar. I'm gonna link in the cards exactly how I took this apart. This particular frame, the picture and mat were all one piece and styrofoam. After I disassembled that and took it apart, I decided to cover what was left of the mat in a beautiful fabric. I had this fabric on hand. It was a heavy textured and I just thought it would give us that custom magnolia look that I was going for. So all I did was take hot glue and pull that fabric to the edge. When you're doing this, make sure that you keep it taut so that you get that nice smooth surface. So I continued working my way around the mat and just gluing those edges. Again, I can't express enough. You need to add enough pressure to pull that fabric taut and take it clear to the edge. Once we got this done, I trimmed off the excess on the opposite end and that left us just to deal with the center. Now this is the mat flipped over, so what I'm doing is cutting a square out but leaving a two inch border because we wanna take care of those inside corners of the mat that really aren't that aesthetically pleasing. So I cut in at an angle to the corner and we're gonna fold this back and hot glue it over those edges Edges where we cut out that foam piece of picture frame and what this does is give us a beautiful custom fabric mat with finished edges you just work your way all the way around the print and you can see I'm taking my time here pressing that fabric in to get nice tight corners and that's what we end up with a beautiful fabric covered mat so I just simply place that back in the picture frame and then added my look-alike print from Etsy. Snook's thrifted frame reminded me for sure of a beautiful magnolia print, but this frame was only $6.99. Magnolia has been using some beautiful, dark, moody mats, and this green one really spoke to me. After disassembling, I placed this Etsy print, and I think we got a great look for less. Our office is taking a little bit better shape now. Rearranging some furniture, working on a gallery wall, all of these take time curating a home that we love. I hope you've been inspired. Thank you for being with me. And remember, as always, stay on the journey as we continue making our way home. Until next time, bye-bye.